Hello everybody and welcome to the third video in the Python pizza ordering tutorial series, whatever it's going to be called later on. But anyways, what we're going to be doing in this video is essentially working with the menu to allow users to actually type in the codes that they see and add that to an order. So we're going to need to do a few modifications to the search menu function that we've created before and a few other things, but I need to quickly mention the sponsor of this tutorial series, which we've heard about before, which is Kite. Now guys, Kite is actually amazing. I use it for all of my programming. I know they're a sponsor and you guys think I'm biased, but genuinely, even when, you know, they're not a sponsor, I'm using Kite. All of the completions you've seen in this tutorial series so far have been from Kite, and there will be a link in the description of this video, as well as all the other videos in this series to download Kite for free. So take advantage of that. It genuinely is a massive time saver and another massive thank you to them for sponsoring this video. All right, so let's get started now. And let's actually start by just modifying the search menu function after I explain kind of what our problem is right now. So what this search menu does, and I mean, we've seen this, um, if I just run this here, is allow us, us to look for items on the menu, right? So I can say, you know, let's actually try root and see if we get something for like root beer, which we do there. I could do um, Coke like that. And you can see we get some different items for Coke, but there's not really any way to like insert the items. You know, how do we select these items when we search for them on the menu? So what I want to do is make this. So rather than having this just constantly search for things, it just searches for one thing and just prints that out for us. So it's actually going to be much simpler than what we've had right now. I'm going to get rid of this while true. And it's going to say you are now searching the menu. We'll keep all of this. So we'll just tab this back. So shift tab. And now what I'm going to do is simply rather than having this break statement, we'll keep that uh, else like that, but we're going to put all of this inside here. Now, the reason for this is because since we don't have the break anymore, we need to just put it inside the actual if statement. So it only runs if we have, you know, a valid item that we've typed in. Otherwise we'll print invalid and we can exit the search. And actually we don't necessarily even need to print anything. You know, if they type an item that's not valid, we just won't get any results. So maybe we can just type no results like that. Okay, so that's good. Uh, we'll leave that like that for now. Let's just have a look at how search menu is going to operate now by doing a quick test. So now it should just ask us for it once. So let's search for pizza like that. You can see we get all of the pizzas and then our program exits. And let's run this one more time and let's just hit enter. We can see we get no results because obviously, you know, we didn't really type anything valid. Okay, so the next method or function that I want to write is going to allow us to add items to an order. But to do that, we need to create an order. So how do we do that? Well, if we look at our API, we can see that to make an order, all we need to do is use this line of code. So order equals order dot begin customer order, customer my local dominoes. So let's copy that and let's paste this underneath our menu line here like that. And let's go to the top of our program and import order like such. Now we can actually look at order, which I have open here and we can see all of the different things that are associated with it. So obviously we initialize it with a store, a customer, a country. This isn't really actually that important, but it's fine. Um, we have begin customer order, add item, remove item, add coupon, remove coupon, send, validate all of these different methods, right? Uh, we're not going to dig into all those right now, but I figured I would show you. So we've created this order object now, and the main method that we're going to use on this order object is dot add underscore item. What this will allow us to do is add some item code. And again, those codes uh, correspond to what we've searched here. So like 16 SCSP, you know, whatever that is um, to our order. So we need a way to do that. We need some function that can do that for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function and I'm going to call it add to order. And what this is going to do is ask the user to essentially type in some different values from the you know search menu that they see that they want to add to the order. So we're going to take order as a parameter. And in here, what I'm going to do is start by printing, say, please type the codes of the items you'd like to order like that dot dot dot. And now what we'll do is we'll say item equals input. And we'll simply do code like that to dot upper because everything needs to be uppercase. We don't want to make sure that we get an error if they type something lowercase. So we'll put this in a while true because we're going to ask them this multiple times. And what we're going to do now is simply try to add whatever code that they have to our order. So I'm going to say try order dot add underscore item item. And then we're going to say accept. And all we'll do in the accept is break. 
So if they type an invalid code, I mean, what we can do is we can print, we can say invalid code um, like that, dot, dot, dot. But what I'll do is say, if it's an invalid code and that invalid code is actually like just a space, like they just hit enter, we're going to assume that they don't want to order anything else. So what I'm, I'll do here is actually say, um, hit enter to stop ordering. So we'll do print another line, press enter to stop ordering dot, dot, dot like that. All right, we'll just do a period. So if they, if they have this order, it doesn't work, but this item that they typed in is like, they just hit enter. Then what we'll do is we'll exit this. So we'll say if item equals equals blank break. So that'll break out of this while loop for us. Now we actually don't need to return anything from this function because all we've done is added these items to our order if they're valid and that should actually be good to go. And now what I'm going to do is say add to order. We need to give it an order object. So we'll pass it order and let's run this and see how this works. So let's quit run this. So it says menu. And what is the issue we're getting here? I'll have a look in one second. I'll be right back. All right, so I've looked through the API here to determine what this issue was, and I found that the issue has to do with the country that is defined in the API by default. So by default, the API or all this code assumes that we're ordering from the United States. But since I'm ordering from Canada, I need to change some things to make it know that I am ordering from Canada. So to do this is actually pretty straightforward. All I need to do is do comma and then put CA after this order dot begin customer order. In here, if you're ordering from the US, you can put US like this if you want to define that, or you can just leave it blank because if we actually go into order and we have a look at begin customer order, well, I've changed this to say country Canada, but this usually and for you will say country US. So in here, it should actually say country US, which means that by default, you're using country US. Now, if you're wondering where that variable actually comes from, at the top here, uh, what was imported before was country USA. And then same thing here. So country USA was the default and then country USA was here as well. I've just changed this to do some tests. And if we look for where that was from, if we go to the URLs library, we can see that these are the codes that we're referencing. So US for country USA and CA for country Canada. So I need to define inside of my tutorial here that I'm ordering from CA so that this is actually going to work properly. and We're not going to get some JSON uh, request error. So let me open up the command prompt and we'll run this again. So desktop pizza cmd uh, i'm just going to activate an environment that i've been using and then i'm just going to say python tutorial.py okay so let's run this we say you are now searching the menu type an item to look for what item we want to look for always the same example we'll go with coke we can see that we get all these codes here and then it says please type the codes of the item you'd like to order so let's pick one in this case i want to do 500 coke like that Let's add another item. So 12 C um, Coke like that. And then let's hit enter and we can see that that exits and we've you know added all of those items to our order. So now what we want to do, though, is after we've added items to our order, we want to be able to search again and repeat this process. And then at some point, if you know they search the menu or they say they type in some specific input, we can stop searching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a while true loop here. And we're just going to do both of these commands constantly. And after we add items to the order, I'm going to ask the question inside of this while loop, would you like to place your order now or continue searching? And then if they say, you know, place order now or whatever it is that we're going to ask for, we will actually place the order, which is what we'll do in the next video. Otherwise, we'll keep searching. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say answer equals input. Um, would you like to add more items? Question mark. And then here we'll just put what we're looking for as a response. So we can say Y slash N and then we'll say if answer does not equal or actually we'll say if answer not in. And in this case, I'm just going to put yes and Y and we'll even do answer dot lower here to make sure that they can type uppercase if they'd like to. Then we will simply break. Otherwise, we'll continue, allow them to search the menu and then add some more items to their menu. So or sorry to their order. So once we've done all this, I'd like to output what the order actually is. So I don't actually know how to do that, but I'm going to look to see here if there's something to actually print it. Okay, so this is what we can do. We can actually just print the order object because if I'm looking inside order here, we have this wrapper, this method, 
And what this will do is actually show us all of the items that are in the order. And this is kind of the crazy line of code that is going to show that for us. So let's do this. Let's just print that order object after. So we'll say print um, your order is as follows like that. And then we can see what they have in their order. So let's run this one more time and see how this is working. So would you like to look for an item? Let's look for an item. I'm just going to look for sauce. Um, we have these. So I'm going to add gar butter. Uh, we can add marinara like that. And then we'll hit enter. Would you like to add more items? I'm going to say no. And now we say um, your order is as follows an order for Tim with two items in it. Okay, so it only shows us the two items. If we wanted to get those two items, how would we do that? Well, let's look at here. So it doesn't seem like there is any method to actually show us all of the items that are in our order. But let's see if there's a way that we can actually grab those. So self .data products. So this is the len of self .data products. So what that means is we should be able to reference this actual attribute from inside of tutorial here and print out all those items. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put a backslash n here just so this goes down one line. And rather than just printing the order, I'm actually going to loop through all the items in our order and print them out. So I'm going to say for um, item in self dot or what am I saying self dot data, this is going to be order dot data. And I believe this was products uh, like that. So let's see if that we actually have here. So products, okay. And then what we'll do is simply print these out. So we'll just print in here. item. Okay, so I'm not sure if this is going to work, we'll do a quick test here. And then we can always fix it after so Python tutorial pi. Uh, would you like to look? Yeah, let's search for Coke one more time. What do we want? 500 Coke. Let's enter. Would you like to add more items? No. And then whoa, okay, so this is what we're printing out when we have <laughs> all of the item in it. Jesus. Okay, so what do we need to do here? If we just want to grab this code? Well, we just need to reference the item like this. And then the code. So let's do this Python tutorial.py. Let's look on the menu. Let's go Coke. Let's add 500 Coke. Let's hit enter, say no. And there's no uh, code for code. So let's try this with capital C because I think that's actually what it was. So my apologies on that. Let's do this again. So search for an item Coke 500 Coke, enter no. And there we go. Our order is as follows 500 Coke. Okay, so that should actually print out all of the items that we add. And at that, I think I'm going to leave the video here. So there might be issues with this little bottom line of code here, I'd recommend you guys test this out a little bit before we move forward. But in the next video, I'll kind of tweak we will clean some of this stuff up. And then we'll actually get to, you know, placing this order, getting some credit card information and cleaning up some of this console stuff a little bit uh, better, just so this program is a little bit nicer to actually use. So as always, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next video.